Hello and welcome to my channel which is all about game development and design experimentations. I'm an indie game developer and let's get started. Today's project is inspired by an indie masterpiece, Baba Is You, which started as a game jam game. The mechanics of the game are very simple yet fascinatingly mind-blowing. In a sense, it's a block-pushing game where there are different elements like wall, rock, goop, baba and so on. Apart from these elements, there are sentences on the screen like Baba is you or wall is stop or rock is push. So the beauty of the game lies in these words being blocks that you can push around to change the rules of the levels to win the level. So for instance, if there was a rule wall is stop and you break the sentence by moving out one of the words, the walls no longer stop you from moving. To know more about how Baba is You works, check out Mark Brown's video, link is in the description. This is a glimpse of what I made at the end of the video. So let's begin. First I created a new 2D project in Unity. Then I made a script to create a grid of rows and columns with a simple nested for loop. Then I created a prefab for an element which could be Baba, Wall or Rock etc. Moving on, I created a player script which takes the input of arrow keys and moves a player. This was it, at the end of those 10 minutes, we made a moving character in a grid. Awesome! So next I needed sprites for the elements, and I'm not an artist, so let's ask Google for help. Unfortunately or fortunately, I couldn't find any sprite compilation for Baba is You and thought it would be a great challenge to create the sprites on my own. So I opened GIMP and started creating my elements. Next, I created an enum for element types and a scriptable object which will hold the level data. And then I created a helper class to fetch sprites for me from an element type. So sprite library is a class with element type and sprite member variables. We create a list of these objects in Gridmaker and assign the values in Unity. We can then fetch a sprite if we provide an element type. That wrapped things for our temporary level editor and we could create levels after that. Next I needed to create a cell property class which goes on the element prefab. This cell property will define the behavior of that element, whether it's pushable or not or does it destroy the player and so on. Also, this made our earlier player script useless because by playing Baba is You, you realize that any object can be player character. So that code was moved into the cell property class as well.
So after a few hurdles, I came to a realization that the structure we had made for our grid wouldn't work because there could be more than one element at one cell. So although I could have made a 3D list, I took a more simplified approach of changing the structure to a single dimensional list of game objects which will hold all the elements present on the game board. And when we want to check for the positions, we will iterate over all the game objects to find them. This called for writing a few helper functions and then we were good to go. So coming on to the most important thing, compiling the rules. Refer this enum of element types which is also segregated into categories for beginning word and ending word. The reason to separate the starting and ending word is that flag is win should compile but win is flag should not compile. So the way the algorithm works is by iterating over all the elements and if a starting word is found then we check for the is word next to the starting word. If we find the is word then in the same direction we see if there's a starting or an ending word. If that's the case, then we call the rule function where we pass the first and the last word of that sentence as parameters. Coming to the rule function, our function will get two words of the compiled rule. Now there can be two cases, starting word and ending word or starting word and starting word. So if the rule is with both the starting words like rock is flag for example, then we have to change all the rock elements to flag. If the rule is with starting and ending word like rock is push then we have to change the property of rock to make it pushable. So here you can see me writing the code for different kinds of properties which have u, push, stop, win and stuff like that. So the algorithm for pushable blocks was simple. We recursively check if any block is stopping the player from moving. We skip over the pushable blocks and if there is an empty space then isStop function returns false. Now when the player is moving we collect all the pushable blocks in that direction and make them move one step in that direction as well. Here we create a level editor using the custom inspector feature provided by Unity. 
What this allows us to do is modify the way our inspector looks. To find out more information on how to create custom inspectors, check out the video by Blackies explaining the topic in detail. So by the end of it, we have an ugly buttony level editor. So then I added images on the buttons on my level editor and this is an example of how you can create a level using the same. So after adding a few more elements and levels, this was the final result. I've uploaded the project on GitHub for you to check out. Link is in the description.